Hey everyone, good morning. Give me a second as I get this stream up and running. Had to cancel last week's stream because internet was down. So I might have a little residual lag right now. I'm gonna try to make sure everything is copacetic. Okay, so um, let's start off with the usual. Um, we'll do a quick mic check and I'll do a quick intro of who I am and what I do. And then we'll just get into this week's live stream and sculpting ZBrush. All right, so I'm just waiting for Twitch to what I do. And then we'll just get into this week's live stream and sculpting ZBrush. Get back online. All right, so I'm just waiting for Twitch to You might hear some double audio while we'll I check this. Get into this week's live stream and sculpting ZBrush. Get back online. All right, so I'm just waiting. Cool, okay. Hi, anyone and everyone. All right, so as you can see, I'm live on Twitch with the chat room. So if you guys have any questions, just type them in there, and I will get back to you. Uh, my name is Eamon, and I'm a 3D artist based in Los Angeles. I've done a lot of uh, 3D print work over the past few years, um, large-scale sculpture, small-scale sculptures, and you can see more of that on Eamon3D.com. Uh, and if you want to check out ZBrush Live, I've been doing this for almost half a year now and so you can see some of my previous work which this is my current obsession fungosaurs little dinosaur mushroom hybrids that my wife and I have created a whole universe around and we mass produced our own toys after doing a Kickstarter so the goal this year is to create an augmented reality game to bring the toys to life and to uh, get the toys distributed to stores nationwide uh, some 3D printing address that I made uh, back in 2015. You can see it back here as a lamp right now, which I'll turn on shortly. And uh, this is my own business, 3D Smiths, where I help people convert their 2D ideas into 3D printed uh, maquettes, usually for movie pitches and such. So if you want to go, just search for ZBrush Live and then look up my name. You can see all the previous streams I've done. And there's three pages worth of streams, so all sorts of goodies for you to check out. The last stream I did was, I think, just the first week of January. No, it was the last week of December, so it's been a while. Where I wrapped up this one project, and then I started making zombies, which is what was my gig last week. I was making zombies at, I don't know, two weeks ago, at CES Las Vegas. So this is kind of the workflow that I used to go about that. And this is what I ended up doing. Pull up some stuff. So this is basically what I ended up doing. And here's the finished results. If you can follow me on my Instagram as well, aimanakta3d. And I post all sorts of stuff. But try to post some art too. So here's the ZBrush uh, renders. And I think I rendered them in just like a gray flat and then did a little bit of post-processing on it to get that look. And go through the other images here. Weird. And Instagram is so not like user-friendly for PCs. All right, I'm gonna quit out of here for a second and show you just my desktop because I think I've got them here. There we go. So there's one zombie of the Formlabs project lead, uh, Annalisa. Another couple in like this outstretched arm reaching pose. This is actually supposed to be Joel telling the 3D printing nerd because he stopped by the booth. And this is supposed to be uh, Max, the CEO of Formlabs. Or founder, or both, I'm not sure. So, yeah, it was fun, quick uh, zombie sculpts at uh, CES. And CES was an interesting trip on its own. Let's see. I can pull something up about that. So, I got to try out fun stuff like this at the Canon booth where they were doing kind of slow-mo or time warp photography with light streams. Um, I get to uh, apply at Shark Tank, so I'm going to try to get my fungosaurs out to the world that way, which can't really talk much about, but... 
that hopefully will come to pass. Did some uh, scanning, so I got myself 3D scan, which might be something I want to check out right now because they sent me the email link to download this 3D scan, and then we can actually try to clean it up and print it. That might be a fun little thing to do today. Oh, and I got to show off the Aquaman maquette that I worked on at Aaron Sims Creative. So I printed this guy in, I think, 18 pieces, and then it was assembled by uh, and painted uh, by Tim Gore who paints stuff for Walking Dead amongst a bunch of other stuff. So yeah, it was a pretty good successful uh, CES weekend. Got to hang out and party with the Formlabs folks. And got to go to Big Bear this weekend, do some skiing. So I'm now ready for some action and uh, getting into it today. All right, so let's check out the couple of things that we can stream today. And let me make sure that Twitch is going well. All right, sup, Kurt? Thanks for joining. This is kind of an impromptu zebra stream as uh, I wasn't scheduled to go on today. I was scheduled to go on last week and then uh, couldn't make it. So <laughs> just trying to make up for it right now. And let me double check that the Facebook link is live as well. Let me double. Yep, cool. Do, 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 do. All right, I need to check. How do I even check where Zebra streams are on Facebook? Usually I get the link from the ZBrush guys and then I just post it. Mm hmm. Go to Pixelogic. Go to their videos. Now that's just their older videos. Pixelogic live and see what comes up there. Mm. Uh, no idea. All right, so I'm gonna skip the Facebook thing and I'll just basically be watching on Twitch. Let's see. Ah, okay, thank you for the info, Sculptman. I'm sh <laughs> my face camera is blocking everything I'm showing on screen. Not surprising, I've done that before. I'll keep this video off to the side as I do that then. These were the CES uh, zombies that I was showing. Pretty good, just like two hour sculpts each or less. Working uh, with uh, some zombie IMM brushes, so I was able to pull it off a bit quicker. Alright, so I don't know what else I pretty much blocked you guys from seeing. Um, but real quick then, repeat, uh, Amon3D.com. So I'll leave that there for you. Um, there's also the Pixelogic live stream, which you can check out here on ZBrush Live, Amon Uktar. And check out some of my previous work and previous streams. And if you guys are interested, you can go to Mold 3D Academy and go under Self-Paced Classes and learn all about 3D printing for ZBrush artists. That's my class. So you get eight weeks of lessons for like 200 bucks, And pretty, you'll pretty much know everything I know about 3D printing. Um, Post-processing, pre-processing, keying, slicing, even photography at the end. So that's at Mold 3D Academy. And I'll leave that link in the Twitch as well. All right, cool. Awesome. Good chat window is working well. So I'll have this off to the side, and let's get on to today's ZBrushing. Actually, before that, I wanted to show you guys a couple of things because I had some prints running over the week. So maybe I'll get this window to be bad, big again, and I'll show you some cool stuff that I printed this past week. All right, first, a problem I wanted to show you. So this was a project that I was working on last year for a bunch of the streaming. 
Ryan Winch's Space Pilgrim character. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I still have to do a bit of support cleanup on it, but this is looking pretty good. However, when I came back from CES, I noticed that the whole bottom had kind of bowed out. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it warped and it kind of, let's see, I'm trying to find the angle. It basically bowed out downward. And so now if I try to keep it flat, it basically rocks off to one side or another because of this crack right here. And this kind of thing can happen with resin if there was isopropyl left in the base that was hollowed. And it was basically just weighing down and the isopropyl warped the bottom until it just kind of cracked it and popped out. So this is something you have to be aware of when you do isopropyl, I mean washes and you have to for resin. And I think what I'm going to start doing for my workflow is I'll adjust my workflow so I don't put the hole right in the center of my bases. I'll put it off to one of the corners. That way it's a bit easier to just kind of tilt it over and let all that isopropyl out. So that's something to think about. This is fixable by just removing the whole bottom and maybe filling in with some plaster and then I'll put the base on it like a, like a little bit of a velvet cloth or something or felt at the bottom and then that'll be good. But that's something to think about for the future. So this is how 3D printing works. Is basically you try something and then you adjust your workflow based on the things that fail. And I have failures all the time and I basically try to learn from those failures. Case in point, did a couple of prints over this weekend and last weekend. So these are two really big FDM prints of my Fungosaurus Paradox character. So I'll kind of show you guys. And you'll notice right away that there's some issues in both of them. The, this one being the more obvious one. So let's take a look at what's happening here. So there's this big crease line that's right across the head. And so that's kind of really obvious and hard to actually clean up because it's pretty massive. Uh, that's not just going across the head, that's going across the entire body because of the way this creature was oriented. I had, I had it basically printing upside down like this. And so when it failed, it got a line. It basically, I think the printer just kind of stuttered and that created a whole line right across. So I don't like that. Also the tail kind of fell off almost by just the way it wasn't properly supported. And there's some annoying chunks right here that would be a bit hard to clean up. So instead of trying to clean this up, I just reoriented it and tried to print it again because this kind of thing is only about five dollars to print at this scale uh, using FDM which is the race 3D machine I've got right here so that's actually not bad I'm, I'm fine with five dollar tests to see if they work or not and in this one I oriented it differently I just printed it almost straight up vertically as it was uh, rather than try some interesting orientation I just printed it like this so I get a really clean surface finish on the whole body of the head the tail looks really good. Uh, the feet came out really good. So all of this looks awesome. You know, the whole lower body to me looks really like it worked well. Problem came in here with the face where there's two issues. One is that the, the bottom of the mouth wasn't really well supported. So that's a bit janky right there. And that's something I'll need to either just fix with uh, clay putty. And then just when I paint it over, you won't notice it. Also, there was a little bit of skipping. And right here, the head got a little bit of a line coming through it. So, you know, with FDM printers, there's bound to be something. And what I'm going to try next is a bit drastic. I'm going to try to take the wheels off of my Race 3D because I think it might shake a little bit with wheels. So this is a Race 3D N2 Plus printer. They have a Pro 2 Plus, which is even more up to date right now. But this is the one I have. So I'm going to try to take the wheels off and see if that'll make it a bit more stable. And I'm going to print the body in one piece and the head in its own second piece. This way hopefully I'll avoid that skipping thing that happens when a print gets a bit too tall and uh, the slightest vibration can mess up, mess it up. So this is a pretty common thing with 3D printing is trying something and seeing what works and how to do it better. And I like this support orientation for the whole body. So I'll keep that and then I'll slice and key the head off and do that separately. So I hope that shows you a bit about the process of how I go through things. Alright, A. Nuna is saying, 
why are you covering it at all? Can you leave a full hole at the bottom of the Space Pilgrim character? So with this character, um, you're asking about the base. Uh, now I generally like to put a little bit of felt at the bottom. It just makes it a much more professional presentation. I can show you what I mean by that. Let's see. So this is the felt that I like to pick up. You can pick it up from Michael's, the art store, or a lot of different places. There's, it comes in green, it comes in black, and if you look on the other side, it's just this brown paper which you can remove, and this is a stick-on. So this is pretty cheap. I think it's only like about a dollar or so each felt base, but let me find that edge. And I just had to cut my fingernails recently. Here we go. So there's basically the edge, and you can see it's a bit shiny and sticky, so you can stick this onto the bottom of any of your prints, and it looks a bit nicer. You know, it looks nicer. It also uh, supports it really well uh, so that the print doesn't slip across the edge. So I like to cover the bottom of my prints to just give it that clean, finished look. I can show you an example of that. Okay, so I had to run over to my display case. But here is a print that I did for Nickelodeon a while back for a TV show called Fresh Beat Band of Spies. And so each of these characters, it's printed on my Form 2 on its own. And you can see the bottom I didn't bother doing much with because I didn't need to. They would all be fitting into this base where they were all keyed in, kind of this yin-yang thing to fit into the base. However, if you look at the whole bottom, I covered the whole bottom in felt. And this is kind of nice because now when it's seated, uh, it doesn't slip or slide and it looks pretty nice on its own just like that. So just the thing that I like to do. Put this over here for now. All right, so Zofo264 is asking, what's the cheapest way to print a toy in full color plastic? Sandstone is fairly cheap, but I want to use professional plastic like toys from the store. So if you want to use professional tested plastic that you can put in the store, you can't just 3D print it right now. 3D printing, you can use PLA or ABS, both of which work, but they don't look like you know completely clean injection molded toys, and they're not as flexible. Um, plastic toys, the reason I went into mass production with my fungus store is not just selling like the resin toys or you know printed toys, is because you get that flexibility you get you know safety testing done and it just looks better in that order so there's no way that I found to replace mass manufacturing with 3d printing yet 3d printing to me isn't uh, manufacture ready just yet okay so give me a second I'm trying to try to adjust OBS here Shrink this screen back down. That screen back up. Might have to adjust that as we move forward. But let's just move forward. Yeah, happy to answer any more questions. So if you guys have them, just send them in. Let's see here. Check my email for the scan I got. From CES, let's see here. I can CES into my email, hopefully, see it there. And I've got 20 things from CES in my email or more. Let's see be a bit more specific in the email search. I think I got scanned by Artec. So let's see if Artec shows up. And there it is. 
All right, so Artex sent me this email saying, uh, you in 3D, thanks for getting scanned in the Artex Shopify booth, Shapeify booth. And so there's the scan of me. Let's play that around. <laughs> Doing that uh, queen pose. And it's not bad. You can see I move just slightly, or maybe I didn't move, but the camera's caught a double arm thing. So there's something that needs cleaning up. The head and face need a bit cleaning up. But overall, con you know, with the texture detail of this weird, you know, coat that I'm wearing, it captured everything pretty well. So I guess I want to download this model. And I think they asked me to pay five bucks for it. Choose your background. I think they're trying to make it like an experience where you can uh, send it out to social media and all. But since I'm a 3D printing artist, I can actually just download it and work on it myself. So let me move it over to this other screen. All right, got another question. Steri Izaka is saying, do you know something about the Ultimaker S5? Is this a good 3D printer? So I've heard good things about it. Uh, I have a friend, Daniel De Leon, who uses that one pretty regularly, and he likes it a lot. So I recommend checking uh, through the details yourself. I don't have an Ultimaker, so I can't speak to how great it is myself. I have used Ultimakers in the past, but not recently. All right, I'm just downloading the uh, model from Artec. That is done. Let's pull it up. New model, new folder, call it Damon Artec Scan. All right, that's here. Download it. Let's pull open the folder. So we've got a model OBJ file here and a texture file. And if we look at that texture file, it's spliced all over the place. It's kind of an automatic UV mapping, so I'm not too worried about that. That'll be what it is. But let's open that OBJ in ZBrush. Just do a bit of uh, quick cleaning. Have you guys done scan cleanup in uh, ZBrush before? I'm going to start by just importing the model in. Let's see here. There's the Artex scan. Just thinking about it, thinking about it. And there we have it. So if we look at the details, it's about 300,000 polys, so not a ton of detail, but it did manage to capture a lot. Like that actually looks like me. So I'm pretty stoked about this. Put it in a Sculpey material. And this is something that I know I can fix up to make a, a fun little sculpt of myself, print it out. Captured my shoes and all. So I'll show you guys how I go about doing a quick uh, scan cleanup. And probably not going to sculpt it perfectly just now, but the first thing I do is I duplicate it. And then from there I'll start uh, deleting parts that I don't want and then just 
cleaning it up bit by bit by let's see let me put on some music while we're going about this let me double make sure that you guys can hear it through the system audio This would be so useful if I had like two different hands like this. You can imagine like typing and sculpting so much faster. <laughs> Embrace the glitch indeed. <laughs> Embrace the glitch indeed. All right, cool. So you guys can hear the jazz. Good, good. All right, so quick scan cleanup. I'm gonna start by pressing Control Shift, switching to my Select Lasso tool. And I'm going to just Lasso Select and hold Alt to invert that selection. To toss anything I don't want. Quick, easy way to hide a bunch of the mesh the mesh junk. So anything I deem to be junk, I can just hide it away. Just like this thing on the leg, I don't know what the hell that is. bumpy jaggy stuff on the shoe the scanning technology I feel has come a long way like this stuff is so much better than the stuff I used to get even from like complex scanners all right so all of that is unnecessary I don't even know what that is. But once you've basically hidden the things you don't want at all, I'm just gonna go to Geometry, Modify Topology, and then click on Delete Hidden. So you think you guys can see that, yes? Good. So Delete Hidden. And then when I Dynamesh this time, let's try 128 resolution. That's way too low. Try 2000. So that bumps up my sculpt to about 2.3 million polys, but it does also fill in those holes and close up that detail so now I can sculpt more freely. So that's what scan cleanup is to me. It's basically going to delete hidden re meshing to close these holes and then coming in and sculpting just like I would with any other mesh. So we're gonna hit this area with the passive smooth. Okay. Switch over to maybe some spray brushes. Bring that texture back onto the wool jacket. And it'll help two things. It'll help differentiate the wool jacket from the rest of the materials. And then I can also not be too hell-bent on all the details being perfect on this jacket. Because it'll be all covered up anyway. So this kind of thing I just need to actually come in and fix. 
Easiest way is probably with just clay or clay buildup. And down a mesh again. Whenever it does stuff like this, I get annoyed, but I remember I can always just delete it too. There we go. Fix that nose. I don't know what's going on there. Scan did a good job of trying to capture my funny mustache. The good thing about working with scan data is that you've got all the landmarks really well laid out for you. Most of the time it's accurate. Trying to get that hipster man bun looking right. <laughs> Definitely some weird janky stuff happening up here, which I could also lose.
stuff. Now that you're doing your own 3D stuff, you're eventually gonna get scanned and get a scan of yourself and you can see how you can go about doing cleanup in ZBrush. get that sleeve to come out a bit more. Inflate all of that up. Dynamesh. Alright, so I'm gonna continue this process. Uh, scans are really fun. You even see like the shadow of my phone in my pocket. It's pretty dope. And these pants, these pants would take forever to sculpt and this is just, detail is just so sweet. All right, so I'm gonna continue this scan cleanup and fixing, get this guy ready to print. That's not what I wanna do today. So I just wanted to show you a quick how I go about getting a scan into ZBrush and cleaning up process. Let me see if I can actually bring in the texture too and project that on. That's why I duplicate the model when I work off of it so I can have that original. I'll bring in that texture. Usually in ZBrush you have to flip the texture vertically so let's try that scroll down to the geometry model texture map apply it on and there it is so I want to keep this texture in here because I'm gonna eventually when I'm done with my scan here this doesn't have that texture on it but I'm gonna project it on from here to here and then do a little bit of uh, texture cleanup as well so this might be a project that I continue on next week, or maybe not. And what would be cool to send this to be color 3D printed through Shapeway's uh, little color printers. Or maybe some Mimaki printing stuff. There's some new color printers on the market which are pretty good. And we can export as VRML files from ZBrush to do it. Alright, someone's asking about the music. So it's a it's a royalty-free jazz channel on YouTube. I'll just post the link in Twitch right there. <laughs> Indie Respawn is loving the stash. Thank you. Thank you. I, I like how it's making me dastardly. I like it. Alright, cool. So, I'm gonna save this project out. I'm actually gonna try to duplicate this model and have that texture baked onto the mesh. So let's see if I can pull that off. Poly paint from texture. So you lose a bit of detail when you do that poly paint from texture at this resolution. Let me see what happens if I up the geometry and then do it. Poly paint from texture. And that pretty much preserves it all, so that's good. Now I don't actually need the texture map anymore, it's off you can see, because now that I have 1.7 million faces, that texture can be preserved pretty well. And when I'm fun and finished with the sculpt, I'll project that texture back on and do a little bit of texture cleanup and I'll have my finished uh, 3D scan me. Save this out as one of the million projects I want to work on. And one. But today I wanted to do something else entirely for the live stream, which is because I've been watching a lot of Netflix The Punisher. So season two just dropped, and I've been binge watching it like crazy since last night when I got back from Big Bear. And I wanted to sculpt John Berenthal because I just love his face. Like it's just so freaking interesting the ears, the caveman brow, everything. Especially this look he gets on his face when like he's really sad about his family. And I think that would be really cool to find a way to create a stylized uh, little portrait of. 
So I've got that open to my right hand monitor and I'm gonna just start sculpting. Now, in this case, since I'm basically starting by making a head, I don't really need to start from scratch. Um, I can start from a few different workflows. And actually, now that I think about it, sure this has what I need but I can try this is a ZBrush project not from document like five different ways to open things in ZBrush so I always get confused where to open certain things from like where do you guys open ZBrush projects from I always save the tools normally so I don't remember it's not document open just try that file it must be file go to downloads projects All right, so this is a project that Shane Olson created, uh, which has a little bit of a ruler in there, so you can figure out the scale for your characters. I thought I had a little head in there too, so I'm, done. I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna try to go to Lightbox and just get any character with a head. So this demo head will do the trick for now. And I'll turn the little demo head guy into our John Berenthal looking guy. Alright, so the rule with likeness sculpting is to have a lot of reference open. And in this case, I don't have a ton of reference open, but I've got a little bit. I'm just going to start uh, going to town. Capture that heavy brow at the top. Need to stick that out further to make it look like him. He's got that those caveman -y features. Played out those nostrils a bit. He's got like boxer ears going on that are really been punched around a lot. So we're gonna inflate those up. Round this out. doesn't really have that really sharp chin line let me get rid of that it does have a big chin something I might even want to exaggerate a bit it'll be good to capture that uh, sadness in his eye. So I'm going to turn off my symmetry and just do this one at a time. Just rotate that eyeball a bit. Looking off into the distance.
give him those Punisher traps. Divide a bit. More. Start figuring out the hair as well. He's got a pretty clean cut hairstyle in this season. Sides are pretty short. And the top is kind of doing this square head thing. Just hitting it all with the uh, clay tubes brush for now to get a bit of texture on it, everything. And I'm pressing Alt to invert the Z add and Z sub time to time. Hair is all about doing a bunch of randomness, so you gotta change up the scale, you gotta change up the direction of the cuts. But right now I'm gonna keep working in symmetry. And you can turn perspective mode on and off as well to really get a sense of what you're sculpting. Don't want to turn him into Guile or Frankenstein. Throwing some damn standard in there, up at the top, where there is hair, that would crease. And we'll go in and get rid of symmetry later. Right now, let's get the down to lower resolution and focus on those big shapes. Now I'm gonna look for a side profile that I like. But yeah you, you gotta capture that sadness in his face. He's not a happy character the Punisher.
given the bumpy nose that he's got. Pretty recognizable feature. Bump out that head a bit as well. Forehead. I like to stylize my sculpts a little bit, so exaggerate that brow. Inflating the bottom of those lips there. The chin jut out a bit more. Pinch over there. Thanks for joining me for my sculpt session this morning, everyone. Hope you're getting some time to sculpt something you want as well. Select the bottom half of this mouth only. Just mask that off so I can sculpt a little bit there. to do is create a bit of a ooh because that's that's kind of like John Barenthal's national no national natural expression is just saying a bit of ooh a bit more wide-eyed breaking that symmetry more He's looking off into the distance, just not at anything in particular. get some of that cheekbone in there.
and this music is a bit too chill. Move forward a bit. Likeness sculpting, no easy task. You gotta just keep looking at more and more reference until you figure out the right planes and the right expression. Lips usually have a curl at the end of them, but if you add too much of it, then the character can look happy, and I don't want him to look happy. You know what? I don't need the teeth on the inside at all. I'm going to try to hide those. Break the symmetry a bit more with this. Really hard to capture that uh, expression without getting some eyebrows in there. So I'm gonna try to get some eyebrows in there. Let's 
see, gonna save this. We've got ZBrush Podcast, no, ZBrush Streaming. Just gonna make a new folder for now. Call it Punisher 1. It looks like stream is live on Facebook now as well. So I'll get on there. See the questions you guys are dropping in there for me. Mihaly Arvai, hello. Garrick, what's up, man? Thanks for joining. All right, so right now I'm just trying to sculpt the Punisher a bit. So this is the reference I'm looking at. If you guys are curious and just slowly trying to work my way around the landmarks and figure out how to make it look more like uh, John Bernthal. Bernthal, the actor that uh, is cast as the Punisher. Thank you. 
specifically right now what I'm trying to capture is that expression that he has. It's pretty sad when every time he thinks about his dead family, which is what made him the Punisher. Getting that revenge. I do this kind of thing I go up and down in uh, resolution a lot because some changes you want to make to the, the base itself especially the large changes when I'm working on these cheekbones and trying to figure out that long face A couple of things I can do to really emphasize that sadness a bit. And divide the eyes a bit more. See, so delete hidden. And apply some sort of uh, clear material on them, like uh, see, first toy plastic, something like that. Fill object. starting to see it is looking more like him from more angles and so that's what I got to do is I just got to keep moving around and finding more angles to hit probably get more reference too I'm going to mask right there the bottom of the eye. Cool. And I'm going to do a mesh extract. Make sure I only have that little bit selected. And then do sub tool, extract. Probably a really thin one. Let's see. It's a bit too thick. 0.01. Smooth that out. Apply that toy shader material on there. I'll probably apply a clear material in a sec. It's the tear line, or that tear duct line, and that's really what uh, helps sell it as a bit more. Uh, sad or pensive or just miserable character let's see here 
what looks reflective -y. Some of these shiny materials are really great, but they're a bit distracting. And I want something really simple and clean. Cameron Farnon here, working on his own projects. Thanks for joining, Cam. Let me get the black of those eyes in there as well. Harder alpha to get that crease. A bit of a softer alpha, try to get a bit of that uh, red of the eye in there as well. Trying a couple of different things here, materials wise. Get that line to stand out a bit more. I like the subtlety of that right there. Let's try that for a little bit.
getting that nose right is pretty important to getting the likeness. I'm really happy with the casting of this show though. I think John Berenthal does a great job. And I hope they renew it, but I'm not counting on it. Because Disney does want to try to push their own subscription service now too. I think that's why they canceled Daredevil off the Netflix as well. Switch to my H polish brush. I'm gonna find the bottom of that nose as well. roughing up the whole face and trying to get a texture in there a bit so I'm not distracted by all the details and focus
slowly getting there. Save it out before I lose some detail. All right, Dusty's saying, what level Dynamesh do you use? So I haven't Dynamesh this model at all. This is working off the demo head that comes shipped in ZBrush under a light box. And I'm just working it at different uh, scales. So currently about 220,000 polys, not much. Um, yeah, you can go up quite high in ZBrush. Frank here, pretty rough and tumble dude, so I'm roughing up the texture. Not caring really about like specific pores or how they go or anything. I just kind of want to show a more beat up ruggedness. You do have to change up the uh, strokes depending on what you're working on. Like lips have a very different uh, texture and feel than other wrinkles do. Eyes too. You gotta go a bit in the flow, the direction the eyes would crease. And so far I'm just using like default ZBrush alphas. really shouldn't even be getting into detail but I like to rough up the texture and surface so that I can see more of what I want to see which is the larger surface details the damn standard brush get in there with some lip creases and this is the Punisher and my reference shows that he is a bit cut up from his previous fight so I'm gonna start adding that roughed up detail in there as well I'll go down in uh, subdiv and try to make large changes at any point as well. That's one good thing about working in ZBrush. You can do that stuff at any time.
And I need to start getting some color in here so I can really get a sense of him. Starting with some purples. some dark blues. Some things I do prefer about Dynamesh though, I don't get that crinkling that I'm getting in this surface right here.
is gonna mass select that bottom half. Give more of a lip-like curve there. Fun to just zone out and sculpt for a couple of hours. Not thinking too hard about working on other people's stuff, just working on something for yourself. I think that's why I enjoy doing these streams. Color, believe it or not, helps you articulate those planes, just find them. Because you can see things slightly differently. Trying to add a little bit of blue in there for the uh, beard. Don't want to get too saturated though.
I'm about to have Z add and MRGB on for now. Just to kind of try to get in here and add that hair. Darn, should have done that with symmetry on.
Hey, Guardy 7 sing is the perfect music for the character. You get to listen to some jazz while doing it. Someone's asking about uh, what resin I should use for doing characters. Really depends what kind of characters. Um, great Pro works really, really well for really, really great details. But I use pretty much white and clear and gray interchangeably. Keep the shape of those features intact to the reference. So that really helps it look like the character and feel like them. Feeling like I'm getting close to the likeness, but not quite there yet. In any case, if I 3D print this, I'll definitely have to uh, change it up quite a bit in order to make it uh, read a bit better. We're getting there. Looking at, looking away and looking back, I think the eyes are a bit smaller. Like he doesn't have really big long eyes. I'm trying to make a bit more drastic change. It's okay, sometimes you gotta make drastic changes. That subtle thing of making the eyes a bit smaller, I think they helped uh, read more as John Bernthal now. Bernthal.
breaking the symmetry more, adding my own creases and lines. Roughing it up, roughing them up more, roughing them up here. Give that squareness of that chin back. Easy way to turn them into a bodybuilder. Got a couple more questions. Kurt saying, are you dynameshing? And nope, no dynamesh at all. This is just a standard uh, topology workflow up and down. And Cameron saying, any recommendations how to pump up the details for print? I find my details gets lost. No, that's true. Detailing, especially for you know heads and likenesses, gets lost all the time. Um, the best way to do it is to pump up your detail at least double of what you think it is uh, before printing. And easy ways to do that is, for example, when I do pores, simple color spray, brush alpha, I don't know, let's say alpha 7 or something. Instead of making the pores like actually size properly, which is something like Z sub, something like, uh, hide some of this. Instead of making them like this, which is kind of what they would be, I'll make them kind of like that, which is. I know they'll read it print. So just make things, make details a lot larger. I know it's not really a very satisfying answer. <laughs> Sculpt larger details. But that's kind of what it is. And I'm liking this kind of getting a texture onto everything, just a little bit of texture onto everything. Helps to hide the build lines too, just a little plus. Uh oh. Now look at these from all sides before I hit these. Details in there. And slowly trying to also add more asymmetry.
find sculpting hair is kind of like doing UVs back in the day, or even now. It's just a bit cathartic. Zone out for a little bit. Come back and it helps you take a look at the hole again too. And you gotta think about it in like bigger chunks, not just like little bits. That way it'll get done a bit faster too. clay tubes brush here to add that hair clump detail where I think it'll be necessary. Let's get back in here and fix some of this color stuff that's happening. Not sure what direction I'm taking this yet. I do want to get some semblance of like a hint of eyelashes on there.
find a better that angle. Adjust the light so it's coming up from the top a bit more, like this scene. Turn on occlusion, adjust the blur on these shadows. Don't think I need wax for this, but I do want occlusion. That's on. Could be PR. Definitely want to keep working more on the uh, eyebrows. They're a bit just blurry right now. Let's see. PR shadow. Strength. Cut that down quite a bit. Turn up the light intensity. Which ZBrush had a simple way to just yaw, do a quick rotation of the whole canvas. Starting to get the vibe that I want, but it's hard to get uh, ZBrush to render it the way I want to. Still, pretty happy with how this has gone so far. A little bit more than an hour to make it uh, feel more punishery. Uh, Cameron asked an interesting question, which is uh, for detail, punching it up. Do you use morph targets and then amping them up? I have used that technique before, where you store a morph target and then you crank it to add the detail. Uh, right now I didn't think about using layers or morph targets in this, so I was just kind of sculpting away. Um, but yeah, we'll maybe show that technique in one of the future streams. See any other questions on Facebook side? Nope. How to paint in ZBrush. Uh, so far I've just been using the standard MRGB and uh, color painting using the standard brush primarily.
Well, thanks for joining the stream, everyone. We're going to start wrapping this up. Probably going to come back to this and keep uh, sculpting, try to get that likeness a bit better, trying to uh, get that expression a bit better because really, you know, trying to go for that uh, sad look when he's being confronted by like the past and like visions of his family. I'm probably going to try to finish watching that the rest of that show today. <laughs> But in any case, hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching that and hope you guys got some of your own sculpting done as well. And I will see you next week at the same time, Monday-ish, at 8 to 10. And I might change that time up in the future, but we'll see. Right now, I'm fine with this. All right, guys. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.